Good day. Uh, today starts uh, my little class on uh, marriage law and uh, a few things about how this will be taught or looked at. There often will be repeating, going back to further define things. If anything, it's sort of like uh, building one brick on top of another uh, to understand what makes for marriage. We start out by understanding there are two kinds of marriage as far as the church is concerned. One is the sacramental marriage, which I'll define later, but essentially what it means is between two baptized persons. Two baptized persons. Doesn't Notice it doesn't say baptized Catholics. It says baptized persons. So that is the sacramental marriage. And the scripture tells us that that marriage can only be dissolved by death itself. And then there are what are called natural marriages. That means where one or both of the parties are not uh, baptized. And uh, we respect those marriages, but they don't have the same injunction as being forever. And that'll become very important much later on when we discuss the Pauline and Petrine privilege. So what, what is a sacramental marriage? A sacramental marriage is between two baptized persons. Always remember that. It could be two baptized Lutherans, a baptized Lutheran, and a baptized Catholic. There will be some other rules that apply there, but, but to begin with, that is a sacramental marriage, all other things being equal. So we always need to keep that division in mind between two baptized persons and only one baptized person or no baptized persons getting married. Um, there are three laws that uh, affect marriage. Uh, there's divine law, uh, church-made law, and of course the civil law. And we are not too concerned with the civil law here, but uh, the church tries to follow the civil law wherever it does not conflict with church law or with divine law. Now, divine law binds everybody. It's God's will. Uh, there is no dispensation from divine law. Divine law is divine law. Even the Holy Father can't change divine law. Church-made law, on the other hand, is capable of being uh, dispensed with or changed. And it has been over the ages, as we'll see when we talk about the history of marriage. So again, three kinds of laws, divine law, church law, civil law. An example of uh, church law, which, by the way, only applies to Catholics or to those who want to marry Catholics. Uh, so church law is, in a certain sense, Catholics only. That's why some people misunderstand that when two Protestants get married, they think it's not a sacrament because it wasn't done in the Catholic Church. Au contraire, it is a sacrament, assuming they are otherwise free to marry. And that expression, free to marry, is an important one. Uh, an example of church-made law is that uh, Catholics absent some very specific circumstances, <clears throat> are required to be married in front of a priest as a witness. Um, and uh, that can be dispensed with because it's church-made law, not divine law, but a, but a priest is a witness to that. And then the civil law, um, you know, there are two kinds of civil law. One, the, the civil law tries to define marriage different than the church's understanding of it. Well, if it contradicts divine law, the church does not have to accept it within its definition of how it goes about doing marriage. But also, the church can um, find that certain civil laws are contrary uh, to divine law. Uh, an example of this is the old-fashioned miscegenation laws, which said people of color couldn't marry uh, uh, people who were Caucasian. Uh, the church did not have to observe those laws. Uh, they were they were contrary to divine law that any two persons are free to marry. Uh, and again, for a sacramental marriage, any two baptized persons uh, uh, constitute a sacramental marriage. Um, what makes for marriage? You know, we've, we've sort of made, made this definition of sacramental marriages, natural marriages. Uh, we've just said the kinds of laws that affect them. But what makes for marriage? Well, consent makes marriage. Otherwise, when the two parties verbally agree with each other to get married, all other things being equal, 
and, other, and otherwise being free to marry, that makes for marriage, the consent itself. Well, you, now, that understanding is specifically an understanding of the, of the Western uh, Church. The Eastern Church thinks that a sacramental marriage can only be made by the consent and the nuptial blessing. Uh, that's why in the Eastern Church, uh, only deacons, deacon, deacons can't perform marriages that are going to be sacramental. Only priests or bishops can perform marriages that are going to be sacramental. So a marriage starts out with people who are free to marry, which will, will be a big part of this class, discussing who is free to marry and who is not free to marry, who give consent to the marriage, and will define what consent man, man means, and that the marriage is ratified. By that, it means it's consummated. The sexual act occurs in a natural manner afterwards. Those three things make for a permanent sacramental marriage. And those that marriage, assuming that all those things are in order, uh, can be dissolved uh, only uh, by death itself. So let's go back again over what we're talking about. Two types of marriage, natural marriage, sacramental marriage. Sacramental marriage is two baptized persons. A natural marriage is one baptized person or no baptized persons being married to each other. The first kind, assuming all other things are taken care of and everything is in correct order, is, is uh, governed by divine law and can be dissolved only by death. So what are we going to do? We're going to talk about what it means to give consent and to be free to marry. Now, when we talk about consent, what do we mean? We mean in the most general terms that the person understands what they are saying, what they are doing what they are entering into. The consent also means that they are validly agreeing to the things that they are going to do. They're not crossing their fingers and saying, well, if it works out, it works out, etc., etc. It has to be full consent. Then, um, what does it mean to be free to marry? Well, the most essential example of this, and there will be many as we go through this course, and we'll repeat it when we get there, is that if you have a prior marriage that was a valid marriage in the eyes of the church, uh, especially if it was if it's a sacramental marriage and it was a valid marriage, you can't get married again in, in the church. And if two Protestants have a valid marriage and one of them gets divorced and wants to marry a Catholic, that person can't marry the Catholic. They have a, what's called a prior bond. And uh, church annulments uh, look at the question of whether or not there really was a sacramental marriage, but we'll get deeper into that as time goes by. Um, so that's an excellent example of consent. Um, we'll talk about uh, those things as we go through this course. So I know I'm repeating myself, but these essentials to begin with are so important that marriage, a sacramental marriage, is between two baptized persons who are free to marry, who give consent, and who ratify their marriage. So that is the beginning basis of what we are going to be talking about as we go through this outline. Now, in this class, I really would like questions if you have them. Uh, I, this is a very hard way to teach because I don't see you. I can't react to the way you're reacting when I'm talking. So if you have any questions, send them to me at sta5150 at aol.com. And so next week uh, we'll proceed onward uh, in this course, or even maybe before next week. Uh, I think we'll probably be spending five, eight, ten classes on this, as many as it takes. So again, God bless you and keep you. May he make his light to shine upon you, and may he be gracious unto you, and may he grant you peace. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.